Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Talk and Block. I, of course, am John Velociraptor Guerrero. Today with me on the panel is Nicholas Majentin Shinhan Taylor and Stephen Dream King Chavez. And we are talking about what the entire FGC is talking about right now. And that is this concept of, well, are older fighting games harder and therefore there were fewer pros or and, and and let me clarify that more recent fighting games are easier and so everybody has an express pass to being one of the best or is the conversation a little bit murkier than that is there a little bit more detail steven and uh nick welcome on thank you guys for joining nick i want i know you want to say your piece a little bit before we get into this why do you look so beautiful today what's going on uh no i, do, I just want everyone to to know normally i'd present myself a bit better uh just came off an all-nighter working battle of bc and uh Bum's birthday bash so you know um i woke up at like 4 p.m uh so i'm pretty haggard uh but you know i'll do my best to stay in the conversation steven you're looking great today i must say i'm always <laughs> looking great in my still image as the disembodied voice of event hubs i'm the man behind the curtain <laughs> all right so let me let me start with this Ryan Hart and Chris T had a discussion. For those of you that don't know, and you should know, Ryan Hart is one of the uh, best stories, I would say, in the fighting game community. He's a pro. He's been in the Guinness Book of World Records. He's probably got a, a Guinness Book of World Record for being in the Guinness Book of World Records, <laughs> the amount of times that he's been in four fighting games. But he's a very storied pro. He's, he's been very good at multiple fighting games throughout history. And uh, and he actually started from a very humble place and made it to very high heights. So that's that makes it even all the more beautiful and dramatic and he also has a take that is a little bit spicy right now that i'm not sure that everybody agrees with i think that people have heard this kind of a thing in their respective communities i know i have many times over the years um, but i'm going to quote you what ryan said in part of their podcast and then we will go from there the quality of games have gotten easier so now people that weren't even able to touch these guys before are now able to do okay or you know be on par or even win sometimes mm. take take like a mov or like a like a haitani or someone and play those guys on street fighter 6 or street fighter 5 you might do all right you might even win but play either of those on street fighter 3, Three and, and you'll get cooked done it will be 20-0 like, Three. people don't understand the difference in the actual levels of the guy. It's not that the guy is good, but you've improved and now you're on the level. No, the game has given you access to him because the game is easier now. And you can tell it's easier now by how many good players there are. Like, everyone's good now. Yes. That says everything. Why isn't there a limited playing field to who gets good? Why does everyone get to get good? Because the game's easy. Third strike, you weren't seeing hordes of people get good because the game was mad hard. Okay, so I'm going to turn that over to Steven first. What's your reaction to that? Yeah, um, there's some truth to what Ryan said there, for sure, on the surface. But overall, as a take, if what he's saying, if he's saying what he's saying to mean what I believe he means, I think it's a silly take. Um, the assertion seems to be that the new games are just too easy. They're designed to be too easy. So too many people can get good. And thus you don't have these, this exclusionary class of pro players who are the best of the best. You don't have your five Japanese gods of fighting games anymore. And in Ryan's eyes, or I guess just for a lot of people or some people in this landscape, that's an issue. And depending on how you look at it, yes, it could be an issue, but also there's just so much to this topic that I think that that's a very, um, to me, it just comes off as a very, like, it, it's a little bit elitist to me. And and no disrespect to anybody involved here, Riot Hard is, you can never take his accomplishments away. He's he is so seasoned in our, in our community and no disrespect to him or Chris T, but it's, there's a little bit of a, an air of elitism in my opinion here, because it's like, eh. We'll get into it, but I'll, I'll let Nick take over on this one. Uh, yeah, I largely agree with what Ryan's saying. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna be like, yeah, he's 100 percent right about everything because I think there's definitely nuance there. But I do think it's a fact that fighting games have gotten easier, and I see this, um, I see this whole thing of like, oh, there are so many top players because, um the ceiling has been lowered, right? Uh, that's basically the argument as far as I can tell. And I generally agree with that. I don't think... 
I don't think his example is very good because he says like, oh, well, if you play it against MOV and or Haitani in third strike, you'd get cooked. And it's like, yeah, because the players you're talking about didn't play those games, you know, <laughs> they weren't mm -hmm. around most likely. Mm -hmm. um, if like, I would say a more interesting view of it, which is also like basically impossible to prove. I saw MenRD write something like this uh, on Twitter. I'm, I'm not quoting because I don't remember exactly what he said, but it was like around this subject. Nobody knows how he would do in Card Strike against them because mm -hmm. he wasn't around, right? So if we had some kind of alternate reality machine where he gets born 10 years earlier and he's able to compete in Card Strike instead of Street Fighter V 10 years earlier, probably like 15 years earlier, um, then, you know, maybe he would be world class, right? Maybe. We don't know because uh, he's an amazing fighting game player. Uh, you know, two-time Capcom Cup champ, doing really well in Street Fighter VI this first year as well. Um, maybe he would be amazing at first strike if he had put the same amount of time into that. But there's no justification for him to do so now, because it doesn't sure. give him anything. And even if yes. he did, and le let's say he did, like, dedicate his life for three years to first strike, and then he plays against Titani or MOV, it still wouldn't really mean the same no. thing even if he beats them, because they're not at their prime anymore either. Well, but so, also, I mean, to, to add to that, though, those guys have had, what, 20 years of experience playing a game that they know intimately and have done incredibly well in. If you give Mena three years, there's still not an accurate gauge of, no, of course, well, of could he? Yeah, and it's like, well, how do you, that doesn't even, it doesn't make sense. And I think that's also where some of that air of elitism comes in, because it kind of feels like, with that quote, it feels a little bit like, Back in my day, we were we were the pros and we were really really good. And these new these new cats would never be able to do that. And it's like, well, these new cats are doing all kinds of other amazing things now. It's like there's a little bit of this like they would never have been able to hang then. It's like, well, for a number of reasons, yes, but it's also like like you said, like had men have been born back then, we don't know what he would have done. He could have been one of the best easily. Yeah. I just, so, I just think the... I, I want to also highlight, so I don't get, like, misinterpreted here. Uh, I definitely agree that, like, the mm, breadth of uh, good players now. Like, uh, Ryan said, like, oh, everyone's good. That is... Mm, I'm not saying that all of these players who are considered good now would have been like that. I'm just using MenRD specifically as an example. Because yes. I do agree that, like, back then... In Third Strike, for example, in Capcom vs. SNK2, Virtua Fighter 4, you know, all of these games, Tekken 5. Um, the uh, the amount of good players was lower because getting to their level was a lot more difficult. I think it's easier to get to a top level now, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you have a much... It, it, that doesn't mean it's easier to win a tournament because the competition of good players is much higher, right? Because if you have a 1,000-person Street Fighter 3 tournament in uh, Japan, like back in the day... Uh, you could probably look at like five players and they're gonna be the guys who are probably gonna win, right? Uh, like people like Kuroda, Tokido, uh, Nuki, etc. Um, and they would have to play against each other, so that makes it really difficult, right? Uh, but now in Street Fighter 6, sure, there might be like 50 players at EVO that are like winner candidates. And even though the ceiling is lower, that still means you have more people to compete against. So like winning a tournament is still going to be difficult today, but for different reasons. You know, so it sounds like what we're saying here is that the, is the comparison that's kind of being made is a little bit of an so much so apples to oranges that, yes, there is this discernment, but how can you necessarily know which difference is the key factor, if not all of the differences? Because the, the landscape was just so different. In, back in the day, it was arcades. You didn't have, not only did you not have training mode, you had to have a quarter and you had to get in line in order to practice anything. I remember, I, I always go back to this, even in Street Fighter 4, the early days when it was just still arcades, El Fuerte had a very difficult um, infinite combo. It had a bunch of one-frame links, and obviously it was repeated every time to do the combo uh, and and killer kai would talk about how he learned the el forte infinite and he did that by the way in the old school way of arcades and just quarters he wasn't sitting there you know resetting into the right part of the screen at the right time with the right amount of meter and everything like we have now it was you put a quarter in and you are either playing against another human being or at least an ai that might be cheating by the way because we all know how those old school ais tended to be reading inputs and such and so the amount of passion that was required 
for someone to reach these levels was much higher back in the day. Now, someone can still have that amount of passion, but now the amount of resources is so prevalent. You can use all of the benefits of these much fleshed out training modes that, by the way, exist in the first place. But you can also share tech. Like when something happens, oh my gosh, the entire FGC knows it now. You don't have to go and, you know, get a camcorder and record someone, you know, with VHS footage and then get that tape processed in order to watch a tape back. Everybody's stuff is online. Uh, it, you can go and find replays and follow people. So the resources are immense. So you would end the the accessibility to these games elsewise is immense you can play it on so many different platforms you can play it from the comfort of your home you can play online now with pretty much the same level of of uh growth and understanding of the game like playing online is pretty close to the same thing as playing offline as long as the connection is strong and they've created the infrastructure for that to happen so so now yes it's a much more fertile ground there's much more attention being put on these games and so the player base is much larger and so many times in my own travels or in my i should say my own journey even um, and in different communities i've even seen this mentality of well a new game comes around and the people who were good at the old game are not doing as well one of the easy things to do and I, I myself have been tempted by this and I've probably said things things private and public before that well it's because the new game is too easy so it's easy for everybody to be the same as me if this were more restricted and you needed to be better well that's the old game and that shows the true skill uh, 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 in I, I hear that in third strike the better player always wins or at least to a greater degree than in recent games and I will say in Street Fighter 5 I, I felt like and this was my second big game where I would have be most tempted to say this it did feel like if you were good at v triggering you could be better than people that were good at footsieing and, and there I think there is some substance to that argument if a game is poorly made or it's imbalanced in how uh, in, in in the things that are strongest in that game that yes you can have a way that's it's easier for just anybody to get to the top but I have to say, I, I don't think, personally, I don't think that um, a lot of what Ryan is saying here really maps over or that at the very least, we can know that for sure because the landscape is so vastly different now. Well, that's that's the whole thing is that um, it feels like the assertion is that it was harder back in the day and you had to be more passionate to get into this stuff and there were less pros because it was so much harder to do well and somehow I guess that's better than modern day is it feels like what the assertion is here kind of at its core, but it's weird because it's like saying you had to be more passionate to do that stuff back then is like silly to me because you have people who today are as passionate or more passionate and doing things like we did the, um, the we shared the video from Tokido where he talks about taking notes and Nick here translated that for us. Thank you, man. But um, Tokido has like pages and pages of notes and all these things about every different matchup. He has all these kinds of like, I need to be here in this spot. I have this combo for this matchup and all these different things. Now, are you going to tell me that all of the work he's put into that is less passionate than you having to go to an arcade and be in the scene? Like it just, it's not the same thing, but it doesn't mean one is more than the other. You can still be just as passionate. It's just in a different way. And it's for to, to do different things because the landscape's different now. So to to kind of try to look back and go, oh, well, back in the day, we used to do it like this and it was so much harder. And it's like, yes, technically the games were harder to get into, but we've also wanted growth in the community for years. Like these same pros back in the day were always talking about how the FGC isn't big enough and the prize pools aren't big enough and we can't grow and fighting games are too hard to get into and it stagnates our growth. Now we've got growth. Now we've got more accessible fighting games. We've got bigger prize pools. Now we can't win and oh, well, now it's a problem. And it's like, that's that shouldn't be, we should be encouraging people to get into fighting games more. And it's a new landscape. You learn the matchup, you adapt. That's what we do. I'm not sure that these are the same people though. Like the people who said that, you know, oh, uh, we're limiting the FGC or, you know, we need more growth in the FGC. I'm not sure those are the same people who are saying this stuff now. Sure, but I feel like generally speaking over the years, and especially with competition and stuff, we've, we've looked at other communities as a whole and gone, <laughs> hey man, they're getting more than what we're getting. Mm. Their prize pools are bigger, their exposure's bigger. There's always been that, hey, we want to grow and become more of a thing so that we can get more out of what we're doing. And I feel like we've kind of gotten to that point now, but it's like, 
you can't get there with having fighting games being as hardcore as they used to be. It's just it, the barrier of entry was way too high. You could never do that. But now that these things are more accessible and people can get into it, we have that growth, but it's just changed the landscape so drastically now. It's a new matchup. We have to learn how to kind of get better in this new landscape is, is how I see it anyway, because it's these things evolve and change. It's never going to be we're not going to have third strike for 50 years. It's never going to be that way. Every new game is different. These developers are trying to figure out what's the best way to get new people in without making these games completely trash. Although there's probably some developers who have not or <laughs> maybe missed that mark. I'm sure Nick has some thoughts on some of those developers, um, but it's just, it, to me, it feels like this is kind of the natural progression of things. And the people who want to do it and are going to get good at this stuff, they're going to do it. They're going to find a way to do it. And you see that in pros like Tokido and Fudo and these guys that have been around forever that are still consistently in the top eights, in the top, you know, 64 or whatever. What do you guys think of this? I was talking with my... My buddy Born Free, who's who's live and well, everyone. Just so you know. Yeah, shout out to Born Free. Uh, he mentioned, mm -hmm, and he said uh, in discussing this topic, he said, if Third Strike were released today, everyone would be doing the Daigo parry. Yeah. What do you think of that? No, a yeah. hundred uh, percent. Because a big mm -hmm. part that's different from back then compared to now is how easy it is to share stuff. Because um, you know. Uh, you always hear this meme, save it for nationals. That was the, the old meme, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, you don't want to show your tech to people so they can start like figuring it out and uh, realizing what you're doing. Um, hiding tech now is a lot more difficult, and especially with how much stuff people share, because maybe your piece of tech requires three different components, and there are already people online that have shown all three of these components. You're the only one who pieced it together, maybe, right? But you sitting on that is still opening the door for other people to find it and share it because those components mm -hmm. are out there. That did, wasn't necessarily the case back in the day because I have a friend uh, who was really good at first strike here in Sweden. Um, people who are tuned in to the Europe scene at, like, at least might know him. Um, his name is, or like his gamer name is uh, Cyrox. And, uh, you know, he's been really good in first strike. He's been really good in Tekken. And he told me about like when he came up and like started really playing, I think that was around 2006, 2007, finding videos was not a thing. So at some point, someone had posted like recordings from SBO and stuff, and he would download that. And you know, it's like 128K, uh, <laughs> K, you know, you know, it's like, yeah. it's like really bad quality. And he would like sit and just look through all this footage and try to find what is this guy doing that I'm not doing? And try to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But this was like once a year that he might get something <laughs> like that. Like now, you go online, you check the replays of your favorite players, you go to YouTube, you go to Twitter, uh, X, whatever. Um, you go to Event Hubs and see the stuff that we post, you know. There's infinite... Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's <laughs> infinite resources out there. Uh, and even if you're not looking at the public stuff, there are character discords. Uh, you know, when I was playing Gramble Fantasy Versus a lot, I went to do the Matera Discord. And, you know, first thing I did was uncheck the uh, NSFW role, because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna join in on that shit. And then I look at the tech channel. So, like, 30 channels disappeared immediately. And then I look at the tech channel. And, you know, oh, okay, so I can use my Ethereal Seal in this way. I hadn't considered that. Maybe I should add this to my game plan. And then, you know, Oh, I'm struggling with this matchup, guys. You have any advice? 20 people chime in immediately. Mm -hmm. That's the case. And, and you know, Gramble Fantasy Versus wasn't a particularly big game either. Imagine this for Street Fighter. You know, you go to the Kami Discord or whatever, and you uh, ask, like, okay, so I'm struggling with this matchup specifically. What do I do? You're going to get instant feedback, not just from, um, from, you know, other players of your level, but probably top players as well. So when we're talking about this thing, uh, Ryan actually said a quote that I think is applicable in several ways, which is, the games are easier, uh, so uh, they've given you access to the pros, right? He said something like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. It's not just that. You've given, you've been given access to the pros by virtue of all these resources that are available, because you can actually talk to the pros, right? When I was right. playing Street Fighter V and I was playing Alex, I talked to Gunfight. I was like, mm -hmm. this is probably the best Alex around. Hey, let's talk. And he was like, sure. absolutely, I want to talk. <laughs> Uh, we did an article in Event Ups where we talked about Alex, and then, you know, I hit him up several times, like, hey, you know, uh, I was thinking about this thing. You think this could be good for anything? Oh, you know, what matchups do you think V-Trigger 2 is good? You know, stuff like that. 
and mm -hmm. that's available to everyone now. Um, you're, you're, you're gonna get a lot of content, you're gonna get a lot of help, you're gonna get a lot of stuff. So that is gonna heighten the level as well. Even though I do agree that the ceiling is lowered, I still think it's also that uh, the floor has been heightened because of aspects that are not part of the game itself. Well, and, and Let me really, push back. Yeah, oh, I, go ahead. I, just, I had a question on that note because that's a great point. And I, and I wanted to just ask both of you guys like what you think of this because um, it's... Ryan's assertion was that it's, it was harder to get good back then because the games were harder by design, which is true, right? So modern games are definitely easier by design, so more people are able to get good at them. But isn't there an argument to be made that because of the resources and because everybody can get good and because of the connectivity, that it's a lot harder to be good like consistently now than it was back then? Because there's just so much at your fingertips now. Again, it's a lot of it feels like it comes down to who's going to work the hardest and put in the most time and study the most because there's so much out there. Is there an argument to be made? that it might actually be harder to win and be really good now than it was back then. Yeah, I, th I think that this is something that popped up. Again, I, I try to go to the Street Fighter V V-Trigger place because that's my most sensitive sure. place to this, where I want to naturally, I'm inclined to agree because I'm frustrated because that was for me when I wasn't doing as well as I used to. And it's easy to jump on to, well, it's because of something else other than my skill or how hard I'm working. But when I look at that and I go, uh, uh, well, if the answer is that it's just, it's just these V triggers that's doing all the work, yeah, but there are places around that that continue, like if, if you know that Akuma, when he's at sweep range or at fireball range, which is everywhere, I guess, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and activating V trigger from that is so strong, but you know it, then maybe the onus is on you not to necessarily play footsies well, but to be at a certain part of the screen. Catalyst talked about Street Fighter V as being a game that was much closer to Marvel versus Capcom because it was more about where you were positioned on the screen because you had to deal with V-triggers or crazy dashes that were hard to react to. And, and that's where the game, that's where the, the competition was, was at in a way that maybe it wasn't so much emphasized in previous games. And maybe the conversation is more along the lines of well with drive rush now you need to be specifically putting what's the best thing in this game under the microscope and going how do i thwart specifically that and get real detailed know that okay against ken i need to be this far back in order to be able to react to the majority of things that he's going to do and if i'm not there this is the situation that i'm facing and i have to be ready in this other way and you'd really understand it on such a minute level where in the old games maybe it was closer to something like i just need to really focus on foot and it and, and this other things aren't aren't as important well, I, I I have two things I need to say about that the first one uh, yeah catalyst always said it was more like Marvel vs Capcom and I want to highlight as someone who played a lot of Marvel vs Capcom 3 I have always heavily disagreed with that I think mm -hmm. I, I don't disagree uh, sorry I don't agree with that statement at all uh, but I do agree with what you're saying and the general idea of it which is that uh, you know yeah now you need to be more aware at certain areas certain things blah blah, blah. Here's the thing about that, and this is something I think is worth highlighting, because I do think there's an argument to be made with what Steven was saying, which is, you know, oh, it's more difficult now, potentially, because of these factors. And I would agree if the games were still at the same level of difficulty as it used to be back then. But the problem now is that a lot of newer games, I think Street Fighter V is like a very good uh, barometer for this, uh, with V-Trigger and whatnot, is that these situations that are really bad to be in, like, uh, Abigail just did a sweep into V-Trigger, right? <laughs> really bad situation. These situations mm -hmm. were not easy to come by in all the other games. You needed to outplay your opponent to get into the position to put them in this horrible blender. Like, um, Uri Urian puts up a mirror in Third Strike. It's relatively simple, in theory, but for him to get to the position where he's allowed to do that and actually, like, put you in a mixer wasn't that easy because you actually needed to force your opponent into the position i'm not sure and in five he could just tackle and then do it yeah. right it just exactly the horizontals <laughs> zip half of the screen and as soon as it hits then i'm, I'm doing it exactly shout out to and street I think... fighter five man shout yeah. out to street fighter five jesus and i think this is a general thing in fighting games now where forcing these situations is way easier so it's not that fighting games didn't always have these 50 50 situations that are just like 
a coin flip, right? That's always been a thing. It's always going to be a thing. It's an essential part of fighting games. But if you get put in that situation, you should have been doing something wrong. That's not always the case now, or at least not to the same extent. You, know, you get sure. what I'm coming from? Right. And, and, and I, I would argue that that this this kind of boils down to there is a certain line where it's just too easy to be good like if everyone's given a nuclear bomb and you just like oh i just generally need to toss it in the in the opponent's direction i don't need any precision then that starts to make the game not fun yeah but if there's too much of that save for the motivation that comes with a million dollar prize pool but realistically how many people are competing for that and playing the game for that versus how many people are playing because the game is entertaining and fun i think that's the main discerner that you have to look at if the game is too much that people are going to stop playing it it's just going to be a not engaging, not fun thing to do. And from what I've seen, well, a lot of people did drop off in SF5, but it also, you know, it had a lot of momentum and it kept the, the series above water and it, and it did okay. Um, Street Fighter VI, we're seeing a lot of people play this game, a lot of people come back, and it is a grind. I think we all know if you played ranked for more than 40 minutes, then you're, you've, you've, you know what burnout is like in both in the mm -hmm. game and real life. And But we keep coming back to it because there's an element of it's really fun, it's really engaging, it's really entertaining, and it's a puzzle that I enjoy working on. Mm -hmm. I think all three of us stopped playing SF5 at some point, um, and we, hang, we hung on to it a lot longer than we might have otherwise, at least in, in my case, because well, I need to be familiar with this because I need to be able to write about it. I need to be able to talk about it. So I was motivated for other things. And, you know, sometimes we're holding on to glory and trying to win and, and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, I would turn on a game like Street Fighter 4 and I can appreciate how fun Street Fighter 3 is, even though I'm no expert at it, I just play the basics, I can see the fun in it, and the fun in Street Fighter 2 for that matter, even though that game is incredibly broken, because there's something about those games that is, for, for all of how easy or hard they are, that's engaging that's enticing, that you want, you can't wait to hit rematch and get back into that thing because you want to run the experiment again. You want to try to beat the thing. And there's, I, I, I won't presume to understand it completely and be able to articulate it, but I think that it's something along the lines of, I can see what I need to do and it feels within grasp enough to do it that I am motivated to continue to try. Or I just did it and that was fun as hell and I'm going to do it again to this guy over and over again. Because winning is fun, sure, but like I would say if it's too easy, that it's a diminishing reward and it's like yeah okay cool I've, I've done it a handful of times or I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go outside and do something else at this point I'm gonna play a different game at some point because it's just not rewarding and then of course the the grind of, of losing and feeling like there is an injustice in your loss too often can just make someone want to go do something else as well but I think a big part of this is yeah it's never gonna be perfect and yeah there's always these differences in what's good in a game and they're, they're not gonna be perfectly balanced but how fun is the process? How engaging is the process? And I would say Street Fighter 3 nailed that. Street Fighter 4 nailed that. 2 nailed that. It feels like 6 is doing a pretty good job. Uh, Street Fighter 5 was there. Uh, but what do you guys think of that? As the discerning factor between what keeps people going and not. I think that is uh, very accurate. And I know this mm -hmm. is something I told both of you guys. Because I've stopped with Street Fighter 5 before both of you did. Like way before. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but I did stick yeah. with it for a long time. I think I played it for three years. Um... Mm -hmm. And the thing about Street Fighter V that I kept saying was that um, it feels really bad a lot of times when you lose, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it doesn't feel much better winning. Because yep. I either feel that I got robbed or I feel like I robbed. That's how I felt the mo yes. most of the time when I played that a game. A lot of people felt that way and it alienated a lot of people for... That was one of the reasons people just or didn't want to engage with that game for sure. So, so so, you could play on that intricate level of, okay, it's just a matter of not being this close to Colleen when V-Trigger 2 is stocked up. It's not being in the situation. It's saving your meter to be able to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't very fun at some level yeah. uh, to a lot of people and and playing in that way it was like that is not enticing to me to to have to work at that area and maybe it's because i'm lazy or maybe because it's just something that i'm not engaged in where in these other games whatever that answer is for those games i am engaged yeah, yeah. but i think um with street fighter 6 i think the jury is still out kind of because it's still new enough where we can't quite tell it hasn't even been a year yet um, mm -hmm. I personally think Street Fighter 6 is a good game. Uh, I'm not playing it very much because I don't really have a character that I gel with. But, you know, if someone asks me to play, I'll play. Uh, I enjoy watching it. I think it's a good game. But it definitely has these frustrating moments in the same way 
Uh, not the same way, but in a similar vein to what Street Fighter V had, and I think that's the discourse we're seeing, because people, I think the main culprit so far uh, has been uh, Dry Rush, right? And and skipping neutral, yeah. and, or, or making the neutral game more of a, a mix-up, because you can drive rush in, or you can drive rush and cut it short, yeah. or and, and, and so it's not so much reaction, and people in Street Fighter it might be different for different franchises, but in Street Fighter, the expectation seems to be, I want a certain amount of footsies, I want a certain amount of reaction-based play, and if I'm not seeing that, then I'm going to go play something where I, I either get that or that I'm not expecting that. Yeah, I think that's the case in every fighting game, and I think another fighting game where we can look at this is Tekken 8, because uh, the hatred in Tekken 8 for uh, Heat is massive, and I feel the same mm -hmm. way. Uh, if anything, I've been playing Tekken 8 more lately. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun with it. I've actually been playing Ranked, which I didn't used to do in previous Tekken, so I would only play it with, uh, you know, at meetups, events, etc. And I would play a decent amount. But with Tekken 8, I actually, like, played online, did some Ranked on my own. And uh, it's a good game. I enjoy it a lot. But whenever the heat interactions happen, I get that Street Fighter V feeling oh. again. I, I really feel like I'm just getting robbed. And if I press heat, I'm robbing. Like, I, I hate this interaction. Um, <laughs> and that's a thing in general in a lot of more modern games that wasn't really there before. Because, yeah, you could be put in situations that were horrible. You could be put in situations that you absolutely hated. And it would be very frustrating to deal with. But it didn't feel like it was like a guaranteed thing that people just get to do. Mm -hmm. They had to have been they working earned it. on it for it. Mm -hmm. and, and to go back to the line of questioning that I was talking about before, it's like I would ask again then, it's easier to mount these the uh, like offensive plays and stuff in modern fighting games because of the way that they're designed. I think that's a fact. We just talked about drive rush and the heat system and all that stuff. That's a fact, it, 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 and that's how it is, right? But that's also the reality we're living in. Now, the question would be, is there an argument to be made that it's harder to survive those interactions consistently and know how to beat those interactions consistently nowadays is is that harder than it used to be to be good back in the day or because to me it kind of just seems like because we're looking at this very much in the comparative way of like the old school was harder and the new school is easy and you don't know how hard it was back then to me it just feels like the difficulty of being good at fighting games and being consistent has shifted where it's at before it was yes. the barrier the barrier of entry it was hard to get good at fighting games because they were hard by design and then you you know that led to you know having your your handful of really really good pros who are always the best and very likely to win nowadays the difficulty comes in everybody has these resources everybody's studying and it's also the how do i consistently survive these quote unquote easy you know mechanics and things like drive rush and we saw with Street Fighter Six that pros like Punk and Tokido, the guys who started doing really well, were the ones who could stop, you know, check raw, raw drive rush and do the perfect parries consistently, like Kakaru and stuff. Like you see those guys focus on that, and then they rise to the top. And it's like, to me, it just feels like the difficulty has shifted, and it's apples and oranges. It's not necessarily it was harder back in the day, and it's you know easy now, and anybody could win, because it doesn't feel like that's the case. It's still hard to win in these games nowadays and it's still hard to be consistently good and again there could be an argument that it might even be harder now yeah let, let me share another uh, quote from ryan on this kind of what we're talking about here he says just to shed some light back in the day everyone that had access to a high level arcade had the opportunity to get knowledge and figure things out but to be honest lots of players were lazy to work hard and level up nothing to do with people hiding stuff saying uh, not saying any of it is easy it wasn't easy then and it's not as easy it's not easy now whether we're talking about back in the 90s or today there's simply a clear divide between hard workers who set goals and achieve and people that don't and have no results be humble in either position so uh i will actually bring up something here from uh Grand fantasy versus which i was very competitive in um uh, when when it was around uh and i played matera in that game and matera is a sonar you know people play its owners and uh, she was frustrating to play against because she could set out these uh, butterflies and she had a lot of projectile moves. And when a projectile hits a butterfly, it causes an explosion. So you can just imagine Naturally. yourself that like, okay, so having setups everywhere 
where explosions are happening and projectiles are happening at the same time. Even though the game has a dodge roll that goes through projectiles, um, you need to put in a lot more work than I do at the basic level mm -hmm. to get through mm -hmm. my wall of bullshit, right? That's at a basic level, that is it. So, Matar was a very hated character, uh, especially uh, in Europe, because we had an extremely good Matar player um, called Mr. Pao, who was like doing really well in tournaments. Uh, so, Matar was very despised. Um, and even though, like, when you looked at actual tier lists and stuff, she was usually not very good. She was always in the lower half, basically. But not always, but for the latter part of the game's lifespan, which is basically what I'm talking about. But she was a very hated character because it was very frustrating to deal with this thing. So, once you took the time to study the Matara matchup and learn how to go through this thing, her basic game plan, it became very difficult to play Matara all of a sudden. Then it shifted. Now, it's very frustrating for me and the work that you're putting in once you've gotten past this initial hurdle that you had to that you had to work through, right? Um, now I'm the one who has to put in a lot more work to actually put you on notice. And that's an interesting like interplay as far as like high to mid, uh, low to high, low to mid to high level goes, because I would beat any low level player basically, majority of the time. I would beat the majority of mid-level players, basically all the time. Then I had to play high-level players, and it was very, very, very difficult. <laughs> and mm -hmm. that's a thing that I think kind of naturally comes out in matchups. And now, because of this frustrating aspect, um, I don't know what they did with Grand Defensive versus Rising, because I'm not interested in that game, so I'm not talking about that specifically. I'm just talking about the trend of fighting games as such. Because of this frustrating aspect, a lot of lower level players are going to complain on Twitter, uh, in feedback to the developers or whatever, like, Matera is so frustrating to play against, I hate doing this. And then they'll be like, oh, okay, so let's adjust this stuff in a way where this frustrating aspect isn't there. But what they're actually doing by doing that, by introducing stuff that you were talking about, like Drive Rush, or, you know, beat trigger cancels, Heat, you're not necessarily bridging the gap, you're just making the frustration shift constantly because and then i think that's why it's important to to consider like i don't i don't disagree i think that that's there's a certain element of that and you it might be that looking at these older games looking at third strike there is a certain element of that too in some of the abilities that you know yun or chun sure. Li had for example yeah. and uh, but the the main question becomes then is it an engaging puzzle to solve and that's where it all comes down to, because you're never going to have a fully balanced of game. Not. You know, I mean, we could start to argue like, well, we just have to have a game where every character is the exact same so we can find out who's the most truly skilled. It's like there's a certain amount of fighting games that's not about who is the most truly skilled in in like what they can do in the game, because it's I mean, outside, I guess, of the mirror match and actually mirror matches are not five five. Uh, it, it, it there's a whole argument to be made about that. It's that, you know, like certain characters, let me let me just give this real quick like honda in street fighter 4 especially um if it's a mirror match in honda it's 5-5 when it begins but as soon as somebody gets a hit that honda has an immense <laughs> immense advantage over the other one because honda's biggest skill is, is turtling up and one of his worst is to try to open up and now you have a honda that has to open up against a honda that is able to just turtle uh that match as soon as one person gets hit is no longer 5-5 in a very significant way so but when you look at this it's like these games are never going to be perfectly balanced so therefore you're never just looking at pure skill versus pure skill there's always an element of advantage and that makes it interesting as well yeah right i mean you, you professional sports not everybody has the same genetics and the same physical attributes and that changes stuff up but it's interesting and maybe you get some more extra points for playing zangief uh, and, and and being you know at a disadvantage against someone that's playing an obviously better character or a more advantaged character but that plays into the drama and the excitement of it and again it all all comes back to is it an entertaining puzzle to solve i think or a demoralizing puzzle to try to solve yeah and i think that's the thing because you talked about the honda matchup uh, specifically in street fighter 4 right um and the thing i totally agree uh about what you said about that but the thing is presumably the honda who got that initial hit also earned it 
Sure. So that's where the level yeah. of of analysis of of and, but that it, it ended there, and now it's sure. okay. Now I get to enjoy the fruits of my labor, and that's kind of unfair. Sure. Now I have a V trigger. But this is also a thing about fighting games in general: is that if you're in a position where you feel like okay, but this matchup is way too unfair for me, uh, you you are gonna one, once you put in enough time, you're gonna have a view of what's good and bad for you, and what's meta and what doesn't work. Like you were talking about, like meaning Sangif. Of course, you're going to have some matchups that are really difficult regardless of the game. Um, so what are you going to do? Are you going to put in the work to try and overcome this matchup? Are you going to pick a um, sub-character to deal with them? Are you going to just hope you don't run into these characters in bracket? Because that can be a thing. Uh, like Street Fighter 4, for example. Uh, Dalton was pretty rough for Sangeev. But Dalton wasn't a common character. Are you going to Are you gonna just like sit there and work yourself up about a Dalton that might never show up? But then it's a different story if it's like... Um, what's a good example here? Yeah, so let's say uh, in Street Fighter 6, uh, you have a losing matchup against Luke. You need to oh. work yourself up about that. Because Luke is everywhere. You're never gonna not run yeah. into Luke in a tournament. That's just not going to happen. So then you have to make that decision. So there's a lot of interplay that goes into that. But that is part of the fun because it's part of the planning and you know what you're working with. But then when you get to a point where Oh, but now they can force an advantage on me. That's not really necessarily a matchup thing, but it's more of a, oh, the game just gave them this resource and it completely oppresses my character. And then it's not, what what is my counterplay to that? If like, uh, if we're using Street Fighter 6 as an example, um, Luke crouching medium punch. Like it's pretty crazy in most matchups, right? Um, mm -hmm. And good moves have always existed, right? But if you look at that, from an older game perspective, his crashing medium punch would be an extremely good space controller, and it would be like everything good about it is still there, but it wouldn't give you 70%, which it kind of can do now <laughs> if you have enough drive gauge and everything. So it's like outside of the actual character matchup at that point because it's more of the system mechanics giving you free stuff and. It's not a Street Fighter V problem, it's not a Street Fighter VI problem, it's a general problem across the majority of fighting games now. And as you were saying, is that a fun puzzle to solve? For a lot of people, not really. And is your ability at solving this specific type of puzzle what makes you a good or bad player? If you look at a lot of older players, they were really good at playing fighting games in general, and they still are, but they get, some of them, get encumbered by this kind of stuff that's just like, not e you don't even need much practice to do it. It's not something that's difficult. It's something that the game kind of just gives you, right? You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah I, I understand that and I agree. And I think the, but I think the interesting thing about this is that the core of what you're talking about, the core of where the frustration lies, you could apply that to old fighting games. And we saw that applied in the barrier is so high. As Ryan Hart was saying, if you play MOV in third strike, He's going to 20 owe you. Is that fun? Is that going to encourage you to want to play more? Or if you're a newcomer and you go into the arcade, you play third strike, you get completely smoked. Is that going to turn you off from fighting games? It did. It did turn people off from fighting games back then. So again, it's to me, the more that we discuss this, it kind of feels like maybe it's not more or less for one or the other. Maybe it's just the frustration and where the difficulty lies has shifted. Because again, back then, that was the trouble. Third Strike, like we had the dark ages of fighting games because of Third Strike, and all these. Like now, it's it's heavily revered as like one of the best fighting games ever. Back then, it wasn't. It was too hard to get into. It alienated a lot of people. People played it. They went, "This isn't fun. This isn't a thing. Fun puzzle to solve. I'm not playing this anymore. I'm not going to deal with fighting games anymore. It's too much, right?" You go. You look nowadays, and you go, "Okay, well, Drive Rush is too ridiculous. People have the ability to force these things too easily. This isn't fun. I don't want to play." You have it on both ends. I don't think it's fair to say like, well, we didn't have that back then and now we have it and it's a problem. Because again, if to me, it just kind of reads as the difficulty and the frustration of fighting games has shifted. Where it's at has shifted and we're in a new landscape now. This is a new, this is a new thing that we're dealing with now. It's a very different, things have evolved in a very different way. We have new challenges and that's not The key difference in this is the example that you're bringing up is that you're playing as MOV in First Strike who's one of the best players in the world, and he basically always was in first strike. Sure. So if you go and you, you lose... You can even reduce it down, Yeah, though. but if you go and you lose 20-0 to MOV, 
and that discourages you from playing first strike, then you were never going to be good in the first place. Because if you go to one of the best players, you lose, and you're just like, oh, okay, then I don't want to play anymore. Then you you never had any passion for it to begin with. Whereas now... Well, sure, but you could reduce it down, sure. right? I mean, you could there reduce it down to, like, basic... number of players basic... that would be turned off, but there are a certain number that, that then wouldn't be. Yeah. But, like, that's and just... You that's... could say the same for now. No, but the, mm. the thing about now is that I don't need to play against the best person in the world to be frustrated by eating 70% from a crouching medium punch, because that's going to happen in silver. You know what I mean? So, so as is... A, as a lower, as a new, as a newcomer to a game like Third Strike, even not playing against one of the best players in the world, playing against a competent player in Third Strike, you could get completely smoked because of how high the ceiling was to get into it. And you could get discouraged. And again, that's why I'm saying, like, it feels like you could apply those two examples to both eras just in different ways because again third strike we have proof like people didn't they weren't engaging with third strike initially it was too difficult and it it brought on the dark ages of fighting games correct me if i'm wrong there but that's what happened uh, like it was it was not a success at first because it was so i, hard. I don't think that's and why it wasn't a, su a success and uh raptor there was part raptor of it, and i have actually done a story specifically on this uh, a recording it'll be coming out yeah, yeah. in the future um <laughs> And I disagree that there even was a Dark Age of fighting games to begin with. And I think a large... It, it was a Dark Age for Street Fighter. And, <laughs> yeah. and Third Strike, it's, there are many, many reasons uh, alleged to, like, to, to why that might have happened, gameplay and outside yeah, sure. of gameplay. I think, I think a big part of it, I'm not going to get deep into it because we have an episode coming up later. But I think there's <laughs> a lot of stuff that goes into it, including uh, the decline of arcade culture, the fact that they never released a proper console port of it. Like, you couldn't play it at home, and you didn't have arcades anymore because they were dying. So I think there's a lot of stuff that goes into Street Fighter 3 having issues, and I don't think there's necessarily any proof to show it was because it was difficult, because Street Fighter 2 was also very difficult. Sure. Let me, let me say, uh, we have, I think, a game that strips away almost everything in terms of all the fluff all the crouching medium punches all the v triggers everything and that is high fights footsies that game really is and, it, and it's specifically a contest in footsies which is i think what the street fighter community bases its main test of skill on is this dance back and forth that game's out there you can download that game and you can play it that's not headlining EVO for as pure as it is and as entertaining as it is and as educational as it is. Like, we could just do that game if we wanted. And it's super cheap or free sometimes on Steam, you know? Like, we could, and there's a rollback. Mm -hmm. Like, we have that and people are not going to just play that. So I would argue that, yes, we want an element of that, but that's not all we want in our fighting games. Sure. We want a lot more fluff. We want that kind of asymmetrical... Uh, aspect to things we and and again all comes back to is that engaging yes yeah. i'm playing from a deficit yes they have advantages you know I, I think your character probably has advantages lily uh one of the worst characters in the game right now in dream king's main has mm -hmm. maybe the single best maneuver in the neutral in od um yeah od spire when she's stalked it's like that's a huge thing in and of itself but then the, you know everything around that is is very difficult to to use and the the equation adds up to yeah she's still not one of the best but as far as dealing with lily in the neutral like that's a very difficult thing to do despite her not being a very good character so uh, I, I think there are a lot of elements here but again you have to look at the big picture the the whole equation the whole enchilada and add it up to what are people actually looking for because i think we can hone in on specific things and say this is all i really care about or this is what defines the game and it's like don't be too quick to say that because you're not just going out there and playing footsies every day the game you're playing all these other games sure sure i think there's a lot that goes into it and uh i can only really speak from a personal perspective right I don't think that like these oppressive situations are a bad thing for fighting games, but I need to feel like I made a mistake to end up there. That's just for me. Sure. And I think that's pretty yeah. com that's a pretty common sentiment, I think. So when games force these situations upon you in a different way, I think that alienates a lot of the people who are into fighting games. And even though you get this new audience that are like getting into fighting games, they might feel the same once they get to a level where they're like, okay, now I understand fighting games, but why do I have to deal with this thing? This turns me off. I'll go play League of Legends instead. Mm -hmm. 
Well, the beautiful thing is that we have active updates now and the developers can not only hear but make changes to their games. And so I would agree that Street Fighter 6 is probably the best balanced Street Fighter we've ever had, bar none, even in its in vanilla existence. But I do also think that V Trigger, I'm sorry, <laughs> Drive Rush, same thing. Uh, Drive Rush could uh, use Not some even tweaking. Close to the same no, thing, I know. But yeah. Drive, Drive Rush could use some tweaking in that it does detract at a significant level from what at least I want from my Street Fighter experience in in a, a sense of of enough fairness that it is engaging and not just a silly like well let's throw things at the wall and see what happens and then exchange MR. Uh, so yes, it can be updated and it's not perfect. These other games. These old games were not perfect, no, but they were not. fun. Yeah. yeah, so now we well, have yeah. the ability to build upon all of the lessons learned and hopefully learn those lessons. And if the developers mess up too much, they will completely lose their, their audience and the game won't be played and then it'll be returned or whatever. And then, you know, things will be a, a it will enter a dark age, maybe, or the game won't be successful. But I, I do I am thankful that we have all this information to build upon. And I think that Street Fighter Six, at least I haven't played enough Tekken 8 to, to comment on it. And I'm certain that MK1 did not do this well but uh that street fighter 6 at least is a fairly well done game that it has its blemishes but that we can work on it and that we are working on it and i i suspect we will see some tweaks to these main things and get it closer to that back and forth that satisfies yes it's it satisfies the the crowd that needs that wants to get in with a little bit more ease that wants to be entertained with a little bit more ease but then also those that are reliant on high level play to to get their uh their their enjoyment out of the game and out of the experience as well i think tekken 8 is very much the same uh it needs tweaks it's gonna get tweaks i think it'll be fine outside of heat i think it's a very good game it has some issues but you know uh as i said we're in a patch culture now i don't think it will be a problem um so i think tekken 8 will also be doing really well uh moving forward uh overall i think the fgc is in a pretty good spot I just, I, I feel like developers are walking a tightrope where they keep putting these things into the game. And I think in a lot of cases, they don't really need to be there. I, I personally don't think Heat really needs to be in Tekken 8. Um, but there's still so much good around it that makes it worthwhile anyway. You like begrudgingly accept it. But mm -hmm. wouldn't it have been nice if we didn't have to begrudgingly accept anything? Yeah, well, <laughs> go live in that reality it, that doesn't exist. Yeah, uh, it, it would, but it, again, it's like you, you look at that stuff and you go, for us, for seasoned fighting game players, yes, there are things that's like, oh, if we, to if we tone that down, it would be amazing and it'd be ideal. But again, the developers aren't balancing just for us. Of they're course. not balancing just for um, you know the pro players and the tournament winners. They're, they're balancing and developing these games for everybody. And, and again, if we want growth with these games and the, this community, we're going to have to deal with some of that stuff. I think that's just going to be our reality. If the last few, game, you know, few games or a couple games were any indicator, that's kind of the reality, I think. And we hold, I think... Look, from Street Fighter V to Street Fighter VI, it, it definitely looks like Capcom is understanding like how to better do this stuff at least because Street Fighter V had so many egregious examples of just throw it out there, just do it, unga your plus on block and V trigger mix ups and all that and robbery and all that stuff. I feel like Street Fighter VI has similar elements, but if we're being real, it does feel like, and this is at least this is what I found personally. I, I don't know if you guys have, I believe you have, but. When you dig into Street Fighter 6 and you try to really figure out counters for things, you have answers. Mm -hmm. They're there. Sure. There are actual legitimate options and counters. The, uh, the the only option isn't just don't be there on screen yeah. anymore. Like you actually have legitimate ways to get out of this stuff. So maybe it, it's maybe this is an indication that Capcom's kind of moving towards like we're going to still do these these kinds of things, these easy mechanics, these flashy things, but we're learning better how to kind of manage them so they don't feel so oppressive again some people still feel heavily oppressed by street fighter 6's mechanics but i think there's a marked difference between how street fighter 5 was and street fighter 6 was on the front of the mechanics and the oppressiveness so maybe we do get a few you know games down the road and then capcom figures out that perfect you know or these fighting game developers figure out that perfect balance there but again it's you're trying to please so many different people and audiences at once and there's so many factors 
we're never going to have the perfect fighting game. It doesn't exist. And the most balanced fighting game in the world is going to be boring as hell and nobody's going to play it. That's... It's, it's just, not. It's not really yeah. about balance, though. Like ba balance isn't really the thing. About sure. Fun. Yeah. For engagement. Uh, anyway, I, I, what I do want to sure. say regarding that is, I agree a hundred percent that I think Street Fighter Six is a massive step up in that specific area, or actually in a lot of areas except music. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I what I will mention though is, I have a lot of friends who are casually into fighting games, but are like mm, interested in doing more. And I mean, a lot of my friend group, like both online and offline, are relatively interested in fighting games. And in my experience, and I know this is anecdotal, but in my experience, these mechanics that you talk about, like, oh, you know, we begrudgingly accept them because they're needed for new players. They hate them. They absolutely despise hmm. them. And they're the new players that we're trying to get into the game. So I don't think they're helping at all. I think what's helping is, you know better marketing and stuff like that. I think these kinds of things that are like super oppressive, uh, that just like bridge the gap in a, it feels unfair way. I don't think they're helping at all because I don't know any new players who enjoy that. I agree. I think that also comes back to the to the whole, you know, it, it might not even feel all that satisfying to win if you're using a, such a clearly, if, if, the, if the imbalance is too vast, it's not it's no good and it's no good in either direction yeah it's it's convoluted it's there's no easy answer to this which is what makes it a great discussion topic i think and i think it's a big reason as to why the fgc has has sunk its teeth so far into this and and i think it's good that we continue to talk about it i want to hear obviously what you guys think in the comments about all this uh, nick and steven did you have anything else that you were burning to say about this before we sign off yeah uh, steven said there's no such thing as a perfect fighting game that's because he didn't play sam show peace <laughs> well, I was going to bring up Samson when we were talking about footsies and stuff, too. But it's like, you know, again, everybody would be playing that if that's really if, if people really just wanted pure footsies. And that's what I want to see. Everybody would be playing Sam show would be the headliner at Evo. Everybody, I mean, like, COVID kind of screwed so it. More. So, you know. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Sam is a bad game by any means. I know it's a great game. I'm just saying, going back to kind of talking about what people want out of fighting games. It's not just as simple as, I want more footsies and pure footsies. If we're being real and really real, people want to be able to win easily and in the, in the sure. easiest way that they can and feel and feel good it, doing it. Yeah. And I don't think that that's, yeah, it's that's really what we're talking about when we get into that. Stuff I mean, another thing to keep in mind as well uh, is that it's good that there's like a wide variety of fighting games because people want different things from their fighting games. Like, that's how exactly. It is that's right. All right, well, I'm going to cut it at Nick's going peace anyway, so this all doesn't matter. But thank you guys so much for uh, for joining us. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you watched all the way to the end here, greatly appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, thank you, and we will see you in the next video.